When I was a kid, I would visit my uncle Nathan every month or so. He lived in the middle of a woods in Washington, in this big aging Victorian house. I still remember driving up there for the first time, seeing the tall spire, its shadow seeming to envelop us as it approached. He traveled all across the world, and much to my delight, he'd often regale me with stories about his time abroad. Uh, he talked how, about how he camped on the African Sahara, or how he'd sailed through the Arctic Circle. He was a bit eccentric, yes, but my uncle was one of the finest men I knew. He was the kind of person who'd give you the last dollar he had, even if that meant he had to go hungry. He'd always talk about the people he met or the cultures he's experienced. Often time when we fished for cod in the nearby river, Nathan would always talk about the old phrase, walk a mile in another man's shoes, and how I would always see both perspectives. Uh, he was a good man, and even today I respect him infinitely. There is one night, though, that stands out in my memory of him. I was about eight at the time, and the two of us had just finished working on his old jeep. The sun was just about to, uh, out of sight, uh, peeking over the mountains and casting an orange hue across the sky. Nathan sent me to bed since we needed uh, to be up in the morning. Uh, he hoped we could squeeze some fishing before I had to go home. As I pulled the covers up, I heard a small clattering outside. I was curious. So I hoped, or hopped out of bed and crept downstairs. The drapes were pulled back, and I would see Nathan sitting on the edge of the porch. He seemed sullen, breathing heavily as he scanned the tree line. It was then that I noticed a shotgun in his right hand, a cold seal shimmering in the sunlight. A small plastic bucket sat on his uh, left, filled with some kind of uh, indescribable red sludge. I looked around the small clearing, noting its various landmarks, the jeep, the large rock near the trees that Nathan let me climb, even the mountains in the distance. One thing that caught my eye was the shed. Just off the right of the house, it was shabbily built. A mess that Nathan always kept locked and bolted with several tight chains. He fear, uh, bid me from going inside, saying that I was filled with equipment and I could get hurt. I only remember this because that was one of the few times Nathan had been stern with me. Now, the shed was wide open. I could barely see the glint of metal in the darkness. The sun had uh, finally disappeared, casting... Darkest across us, Nathan checked his watch and started looking around. A rustling in the bushes caught our attention. Nathan's grip on the shotgun uh, tightened. A white form emerged from the woods, straddling across the clearing like a wounded deer. It had to be uh, seven feet tall, its limbs stretched and morphing as it moved. Its body was a deadly white, uh, composed of some amorphous uh, substance, not like gelatin. Human like eyes peppered its form, moving to and fro in a bizarre frenzy until eventually selling on Nathan. A set of teeth, uh, partially human, partly animal, emerged from the creature. Its head, if it could be described as such, looked down upon him. Saliva dripped from its mouth as Nathan placed the bucket before the beast. It looked at it for a moment before another head emerged from it, diving into the bucket and consuming the fluid with a loud slurp. Uh, the creature continued to stand before Nathan, almost as though it was waiting. He heard Nathan speak. Well, what are you waiting for? Get the hell out of here. Oh, that Nathan continued the creature, and he was just there. I told you before, I'm running out of options here. You think it's easy finding shit you'll eat? Oh, I had to put the dog down for that, you fuck. Oh, it's grotesque. Uh, nearly white teeth shone brightly in the waning sunlight. Uh, they curled into a frown as the creature's eyes focused on Nathan. It edged closer towards Nathan, uh, whose form seemed so much smaller than the beast now. I could see his hands tremble as he raised the shotgun on the creature, the safety disengaging with a loud click. Nathan spoke, his voice cracking. Get the fuck out of here. The beast reeled at his defiance, its many eyes piercing into him. Uh, the mouse covering its body all morphed in angry snarls. It had snaked from its body and sat inches from its face. It was so close I could see the organs and lemons forming beneath its disgusting pale, translucent skin. Lungs and kidneys floated about, connecting and disconnecting with other organs. Then it just turned left. I watched its feral uh, form gesticulate and morph as it disappeared into the bushes. Nathan stood there for a moment. He stared into the distance like a statue, the wind blowing through his clearing light, in a shrieking crescendo. I watched him collapse onto the porch, head between his hands as he wept. I moved away from the moon, unsure what to think. I crept back upstairs and crawled into bed. I stared uh, at the ceiling. You're a fucking coon, monkey, baboon, motherfucking faggot. Baboon, shitter, fuck. Uh, that I became aware of, a light scratching the window. Uh, I turned and immediately froze. There was the creature staring directly at me. Its cancerous form 
was planted firmly against the window, single arm protruding outwards and scraping the glass. I wanted to scream, but if I was ever muscle in my body had locked up. His mouth all curled in the devilish smile as it stared at me, slime dropping and smearing against the window. My breath caught it in my throat as I watched one of the mouths open and nearly tongue emerge. The tongue lapped against the window as the beast moaned quietly. I took my attention from its horrifying display and so long as I realized it was edging the window open. Just as I prepared to slam the window shut, Nathan pounded up the stairs and threw the door open. He eyed the creature, raising the shotgun on fire. Glass and slime flew about the room as I pulled the covers over my head. The other start resounded while I felt my sheets become wet. Suddenly, I was grabbed from the bed and embraced. I screamed, only to realize Nathan was holding me. Crying, he'd thrown the gun down and told me I was sorry, and that he should never have brought him here. I looked at the window. The beast was gone. My father picked me up the next day, Nathan took him aside and whispered something to him. My never... Uh, father never told me what he said. Even on his deathbed, I never went back to his home. Either I went out with him, I moved out, got a girlfriend, started going to college. I never even really thought much about the experience, but I feared it was some kind of bizarre night terror. However, one day I was with my mother for a family gathering at the time my uncle came out. Uh, when I asked her about him, she unceremoniously told me he died. When I pa pressed her about it later, she said that he died under bizarre circumstances about a year after my last visit. Curious, I decided to investigate further. I was just in the local police station as I to talk to the receptionist and let me look into the files, which, which uh, well, what I found was odd. He reported say that the house showed signs of forced entry, that Nathan apparently died of self-inflicted shotgun wound. I couldn't find much about his death beyond that, so I decided to go directly to the source. I went to the house, the road was completely decrepit, huge rocks and bushes uh, forcing me to abandon the car and hike the rest of the way. The house was equally destroyed, graffiti and peeling uh, paint coating small leaf walls. I broke open the door and poked around for a few hours. I still found nothing apart from an insane amount of cobwebs and dust. Then, while searching Nathan drew my trip to a loose board, caught myself thankfully and turned the pry the board open. The space needed for a pile of rotting paper. I went to the best and I saw a little bit of a scrapbook. It made it fairly large. It was new paper. Flippings, most of them dated after my last day with Nathan. They're all about missing children. Kids have disappeared from the surrounded town somewhere or someone, something. They got into their homes and spared them away during the night. The papers report that there were no real clues, only small amounts of clear slime were found in the children's rooms. You're a fucking coon, monkey, baboon, motherfucking faggot, baboon, shitter, fuck, etc. You're a fucking baboon. I was unnerved, to say the least. I quickly grabbed my things and left the building, and suddenly just fallen behind the tree line, bathing the open space in front of the house in the amber light. Just as I started to head back towards the car, I spotted something moving in the bushes. I thought it might be a coyote or a mountain lion, but a cold chill ran down my spine when I got a better look at it. An enormous creature, probably about eight feet tall, had stumbled out from behind the bush. Its limbs splayed out like a spider to drag itself out into the open field. Baron. Uh, then a worm-like head emerged from it and turned towards me, a pair of pearl-white teeth curling into a vicious smile. As I looked over the rest of its body, I saw the creature attached to a huge tentacle-like appendage that turned deep into the woods. I could see something beneath its translucent skin, something eerily human. I tried to tell myself it wasn't moving, I tried to forget the muffled screams. The two of us stood there, staring at each other down. Finally, I broke my paralysis and ran down the trail, almost tripping and braining myself along the way. I couldn't tell who was following me, but I wasn't keen on finding out. Eventually, uh, I made it back to the car and drove home. Once I pulled into the driveway, it collapsed against the steel and started crying. For about a week, I couldn't go outside. I was completely wrecked. I couldn't stand uh, the idea of going the same way Nathan did. I even considered calling it cops. But I knew they uh, thank God it was insane. I can't go into the forest anymore, and even when I'm near one, I can't shake the sense of being watched. I'm not really sure what I encountered, nor do I have any intention of ever finding out. Also, I've considered the idea that I returned to try and kill the creature. Uh, I have little doubt I'd suffer the same fate as my uncle. The old Victorian uh, was destroyed along half the woodlands in a massive forest fire. I hope that maybe the creature had been killed. But I turned on the news this morning three children stolen from the homes in the night. The police were baffled, no fingerprints, DNA, nothing. The only things I could find was translucent slime slathered on the windows.